Hey guys, we want to spend a little bit of time here going over the beginning of our turn of the century unit, uh, learning about cattle trails and the cattle drive during this time period. And so when we think of our unit, the turn of the century, we're turning from the 1800s into the 1900s. So how many years is a century? That's right, boom, 100 years. So uh, really the 100 years from 1800 to 1900, you studied some of that in fourth grade, wrapping up into the Civil War and Reconstruction. So just after Reconstruction, uh, we are talking about the cattle drive and moving in to the 1900s. So 1876 to, it looks like 191.4, but it's 1914. 1876 to 1914 is really the time period of this unit that we're talking about. Uh, one quick cool thing, this is, we're going to learn about industrialization a little bit more, the building up of big cities. This is a legit real picture of um, some guys hanging out lunch break when they're building a skyscraper, just hanging down there. Amazing. I'm not sure that I could do that, but I might try. Cattle trails. So really after the Civil War, we had so many um, men that had fought in the war that had left their homes and now they're coming back and specifically those coming back to Texas, um, many of them were Texas ranchers and they realized that their cattle herds had just grown and there was more than they could ever have imagined. And so uh, way more cattle than what people in Texas and the surrounding states needed. When you talk about supply and demand, there was a huge supply of cattle and the demand was not nearly as much because there wasn't as many people uh, as there was cattle to um, be used. And so really they had to figure out what they were gonna do. Head on home. So, longhorns. You can see a picture of this longhorn here. This is the huge part about the economics of this time period. You needed to understand that if they were to sell their cattle, there were so many of them in Texas, they would just be able to sell one cow here, one of these longhorns for $4. But if they could get them to a place where there was not much meat and a huge demand like out east, uh, they could get as much as $40 for one of these guys. And so $4 or $40, that's not a tough choice. Um, but you had to figure out how to get them there. And this was before cow helicopters and cow airplanes. What they had to do is uh, basically start a job for cowboys to move them along the path. And these guys right here, the Texas Longhorns, uh, were legit. They're the big thing, real deal. They're huge. And so they had to uh, basically figure out a way how to move these guys all the way really across the country. So they said, okay, if there's profit, we can handle this. The solution was the cattle drive they would start to, when we say a drive, they're moving, they're shifting the herds different directions along the path so that they could get them where they need to go. Joseph McCoy was given the credit. Uh, he was a cattle ship and shipper from Illinois. And basically he said, listen, here's a good path to take to move these cattle. I mean, if we can move them from Texas to the railroad towns, then we get them to the railroads, they can take them out east. And so, uh, Kansas is where the trains, really the stations were set up and that's where they had to get them. So there's Joseph McCoy. There's a bunch of cattle and you can see there's not many cattle drivers. There might be, you know, only 10 cattle drivers for as much as like 3,000 uh, cattle here. And they would just get them in a herd and get them to move in a long path. When we say walk down the line in the um, stay on the green line in school in the hallway. It's pretty much what they had these cattle do. Just keep going, keep walking. And so where's the beef? The cattle drives began in Texas, like we said, really in this area, San Antonio, Texas area. And then they went uh, to these train cities, these train towns. Um, the Chisholm Trail was the first trail. Uh, a part Cherokee Indian trader, Jesse Chisholm, he 
he started this idea and kind of mapped out this area uh, moving from northern Texas all the way up to really Abilene, Kansas is where um, the trail stopped to where they could get it to the railway. And so 1867 is where this first cattle trail, the herd, um, started. And for the next little under 20 years, we have over 6 million cattle were herded up this direction. And there's a couple different paths that they took, but over 6 million during this time period so that they could get those cattle out to other parts of the United States. There are some people crossing through uh, the water, some cowboys. If you could just barely uh, get across some of these rivers, it would be a much straighter path, but you had to decide, can the cattle get through it? So it was definitely a dangerous job. Here they are, all the cows, the cattle were uh, taking a break. This was a rest stop. Use the restroom, stretch your legs. Hang out for a bit. Now let's round them up and keep them going. So once again, like I said, there were many trails, but the Chisholm Trail from San Antonio area to Abilene, Kansas, and the Great Western Trail um, from this area all the way up really to Dodge City is the main place where many of the um, cowboys stopped. And then all the way up, some of these railroads, we're going to learn about the Transcontinental Railroad that went all across um, the continent here. But uh, here, the Union Pacific Railroad, there's different railroads that took uh, these cattle to Chicago and then also all the way to the East Coast. And so the Great Western Trail went more northern and, as it sounds, western areas to these markets. And so uh, when you take a look, here, the Great Western Trail was um, going this way to Dodge City and up through all the way Nebraska and uh, really the northern uh, states, a lot of these states up here also were able to get cattle from Texas and so that's what they did. There's some cowboys hanging out. After a long day, take off those boots. They're getting ready to play video games and hang out, I'm sure. Not positive. I might be wrong. So 35,000 cowboys herded cows along the trails, and 9,000 of them were black cowboys. So what happened is after the Civil War, slaves um, that were freed were looking for jobs and many of them stayed on the plantations and stayed and tried to start their own farms or worked for their owners that now they were considered free but it was hard to escape that system of slavery and they were still treated unfairly but those that heard about becoming a cowboy out here in texas actually uh, became famous they were called the black cowboys of texas and during this time period African Americans were treated better than really any other place in the country. They were treated equally in a lot of ways because you had segregation. When you segregate, you separate people because of their skin color. And so with this, you have um, black cowboys were treated equally based on how good they were. If you were awesome at your job, then you were respected and you were treated fairly and you weren't separated the white and black cowboys did not separate. It was not segregation, okay? And so uh, they worked together. They ate together. They slept in the same camp together. You didn't have the separation like uh, what it was like being um, really for the next, you know, hundreds of years like here, like even into today where you still have segregation uh, of different types of groups. Here you didn't have that because... Um, they thought the boss is like, if you're good at your job, then that's good enough for us. We're going to treat you fairly and equally and give you equal pay. So here's some pictures here hanging out with their horses. These are like their senior pictures here for the yearbook. Um, and so although that era lasted about 20 years, this is a time period where a lot of people, like when you make movies and TV shows and different things and think about the Old West, this is a very popular time period because it's super interesting and there's a lot of adventures that you can imagine uh, that would happen. And so as you're thinking about 
uh, what it would be like to be on these cattle trails. This gives you a little bit more background information. Okay.